and I'm recording. Welcome to our first speaker in room three. Today we are going to be speaking with Samira Hamadi, who is the founder of the Modern Etiquette Academy and the Modern Etiquette Consultancy. She's a certified life coach, NLP practitioner, and an etiquette consultant trained by the family, the Emily Post Institute. She is licensed to represent them here in the GCC and in North Africa. Not only is she all of these amazing things, but she is also the author of fiction and nonfiction books like The Princess in the Making series, Having Manners is the New Cool, and The World Needs Superheroes. Having traveled around the world, Samira is fortunate enough to learn and embrace different cultures and customs from around the globe. The experiences coupled with her extensive background in service and corporate performance led her to her passion for etiquette and confidence coaching. Not only is Samira amazing to be reading about, I can also firsthand confirm and recommend her incredibly. Last year, Dubai English Speaking College had an event with Samira where she was talking to our students and she took them through an entire meal for um, an entire meal for how many was it, Samira? Sorry, Miss, uh, you'll want to switch your camera off because this call is being recorded. Samira, can you remind me? I think we had was it was it six students involved in that event? We did, we did. Thank you so much, Maria, for the lovely introduction. Thank you. It was brilliant, and I'll turn it over to Samira because I know that's why you're all here. I'm going to switch my video off and let Samira take it from here. Thank you, everybody, and here we go. Good morning, everybody. I'm very happy to be here. I would like to start by welcoming you all. Uh, I hope you will have an amazing 45 minutes. I hope it will be useful with a little bit of fun and we will all enjoy it by the end and learn something. I would like to start by sharing my screen and it's uh, quite new. So let's hope that technology will not fail us. You're on mute, Samira. I'm trying to, to share my screen. If you could just give me one more minute. And share. Yes, perfect. Could you please tell me if you can see my screen? It's all good from here. Wonderful. Well, welcome everyone. Welcome to uh, this beautiful event that, um, that we are hosting. And um, today we are going to learn about the importance of etiquette in the workplace and why etiquette is important. Uh, in today's agenda, we will be covering we will understand the relevance of etiquette in the workplace. We will grasp the basic do's and don'ts in the workplace. We'll itemize abnormal habit and be the new ones and successfully maneuver business meals and office parties. I, are you all excited? I would take it as a yes. Definitely, so, and, and we can, sorry, I'm sorry, Samira. Everybody feel free to use the chat box so Samira can also keep an eye on that and I will keep, be keeping an eye there for you. Keep going, amazing. So who are we? Uh, the Modern Etiquette uh, Academy and Modern Etiquette Consultancy, where well, we are in co a consultancy based in the UAE and operating in the Middle East and Africa. Uh, we are an online academy as well, where we do offer inspired courses, workshops designed to elevate social and professional interactions. And our, those workshops and classes are for groups and individuals. Uh, our Clients are from five years old till later in life. So we do have a range of workshops and classes about etiquette, manners, modern life, and business. In the business world, we take care of business and corporate etiquette trainings, office reception and front desk trainings, and restaurant and dinings. Now, who am I? Well, 
My name is Samira Hamadi. As Maria did a lovely introduction, I am an Etiquette Consultant. I have been trained by the Emily Post Institute in Vermont, America. I am a mother of two beautiful girls. Uh, I am the founder of Modern Etiquette Academy and Modern Etiquette Consultancy. Few personal things about me. I am a skilled sailor and I am a sport aircraft pilot in the training. So I still didn't have my solo flight. I am a huge advocate of kindness and, and I write about it. So most of my books are about kindness, manners and etiquette. And I do believe that with kindness and etiquette and manners, we can change the world into a better place where we all be living peacefully and happily together. So call me a dreamer. So let's start. What is etiquette? And that's the one million question for today. Why etiquette and what is important about etiquette? Well, although it is a huge, it is a big word and a lot of people do not understand it properly and give it a lot of rules and non-rules. So we will try to break it down into very, very easy words. And we will try to maneuver the etiquette in the workplace. So in other words, etiquette is manners and principles. So it's a formula between manners and principles. Principles are the fundamental values set by people such as respect, consideration, and honesty. And manners are a set of conventional rules of a personal behavior in a polite society, which imply to each country and culture. Now manners means what to do, and what is expected from us to do by others. So in other words, how do we answer the phone? How do we introduce ourselves? And how do we use fork and knife? Principles on the other hand is what to do when there is no manners and how to resolve any situations. And as we spoke earlier, it is respect. And respect is that we accept somebody for who they are, even if they are different from us. And even if when we do not agree with what they are doing or saying, that is respect. Consideration is simply being caring about another person's feelings and state of mind. And honesty is being truthful to ourselves and truthful to our society. So in other words, it's being real. Now manners, they are time sensitive. In other words, etiquette 100 years ago is, is quite different from the etiquette of today. And thank God for that. It varies between cultures. So what is, what is uh, seen as etiquette in France might be completely different in Japan. And that's okay because each, each country has their own culture and their own manners and we do accept all countries. Now principles in the other world, in the, in the, the other hand are timeless. So respect, consideration and honesty and kindness are timeless and are seen in every culture, in every country, in every background. So now that we know what is etiquette, um, and here it's a beautiful image of the former President Barack Obama uh, with the, the Emperor of Japan. And it, it is an image on what manners are of, for each country and yet deciding to follow the principles of respect and consideration. Now, why it, etiquette is important in the workplace? Clarence Thomas said, good manners will open doors that best education cannot. In other words, you, you students are, are in schools, are in unis, trying to get the best education. But if you do not have this skill, this soft skill that will help you navigate through life, you, you will be lacking something. You might, you might miss a promotion. You might miss something big in your life just because you lacked some basic soft skills that you can have, that you can learn very easily. So the first thing is etiquette is important in the workplace because it makes a very good first impression. We all know that the first five, five to seven seconds after we meet somebody are crucial. Your first impression linger in the other person's mind long after they are gone. In other words, we still remember people that we met five years ago, and we do remember how they made us feel. 
it provides personal security. Knowing how to behave appropriately in a particular situation, give it an example in an office, at a dinner table, make you more comfortable and it gives you a sense of belonging. Number three, it protects the, it protect the feelings of others. Etiquette requires that you make the other person feel comfortable and protect their feelings. In other words, etiquette teaches us to not point out people's errors or discuss their mistakes. Now, I noticed here that protect is, is missing an S, so please don't mention it. Number four, etiquette, it makes communication clearer. Etiquette enhances communication by breaking barriers. It enhances your status at work. If you know the, kind of, the code of conduct on, of your workplace, you would be perceived as more capable, more intelligent, and more professional. In other words, business etiquette is important because it creates a professional, mutually respectful atmosphere and improves communication, which helps an office serve as a productive place. People feel better about their jobs when they feel respected, and that translates into a better customer relationship as well. Now, what are the consequences when there is no civility in the workplace? In other words, when there is no etiquette? What could happen? Well, many things can happen. First, we have three main things. Company, into the employees, and yourself. So let's start by the company. If there is no etiquette in the workplace, you will be having a hostile environment. And a hostile environment, it means you can experience harassment about race, gender, physical disability, national origin, et cetera. There will be a loss of productivity, a loss of profit to the company, poorer retention. A lot of many employees will be resigning and trying to get to go elsewhere to a safer environment because you do not feel safe if there is no etiquette in the workplace. And there will be difficulty recruiting to the company because the company would have already had a bad reputation. So in other words, they won't be able to, to recruit high key people, high key performers. For the employee, as employee, they might experience bad language that can be offensive, demeaning, excessive work, workplace gossip, colleague binding other people, other, other colleague personal businesses, using company resources for personal use, and too many personal calls. Now, what can be the consequences of incivility on you? Negative work atmosphere, loss of work time. So instead of working, you will be paying attention to the incivility, to the hostile environment you are working on. You will be under stress all the time. You will have poor evaluation because you, because, because you are stressed. You are not performing at 100%. So hence, it will reflect on your evaluation. There will be loss of referrals. The, and then you would be focused, as I said in the beginning, on the incivility. It will affect the quality of your work. And even more, it will affect the quality of your life. Because instead of going home and just relaxing, you will be thinking and thinking and thinking, am I getting redundant? Am I, getting, am I going to have the promotion? Is this will happen to me? So you can understand that it is very, very important. Having etiquette in the workplace is crucial. What are the most common cause of incivility in the workplace? Well, there are many, but today we are, we are focusing only on the informal work culture, but we're just gonna speak a little bit about the rest. Changes, doing more with little, with, with only little, downsizing, language, technology, the mayism and time pressure. Well, I hope you're not scared. And I hope you still want to work. You still want to go there and show yourself in the workplace. Now we do have healthy habits and we will start by first when you join the company. 
So the first thing I would advise everybody is when you join a company, do arrive on time and make it a habit to arrive 10 minutes early in all your meetings and in all your appointments and make it a habit to become a lifestyle, not only for your work, but in general, make yourself known as being a punctual person. Number two, know your key players. Know who they are, know them by names. Know something positive about those key players and admire them for that and make sure to remember them for those beautiful um, positivity maybe they are bringing into the company. Remember names, this is very important. Remembering names, remembering your colleague names, your client names, your manager names is a golden rule. And there are a few ways on how to be able and manage to remember names. So first of all, you can focus on the person who is talking or who, who you are talking to. Number two, repeat, try to repeat their names maybe two to three times during the conversation that you are speaking with them. And then try to link the name with something that you already know. And connect the name with the face or, correct, sorry, connect the name or their faces with a visual image. So in that way, you will remember the name for the long time and you will make them feel special. Number four, simply observe and learn. Be there, be grounded. Try, to, try to, 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 to understand everything. Try to learn everything. Be a sponge. You are, you are going to a new company. They have different set of rules. It's completely different from, uh, from schools. So be there as a fresh start. Like, okay, I am here to learn. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I will try to learn as much as I can. And if you go with that state of mind, with this mentality that you are there to learn, you are there to grow, it will open doors for you. Number five, and this is my favorite, be kind. Kindness is the most beautiful gift you can give to the world, the most beautiful. Be kind to everyone regardless of their position, regardless of their rank. Say good morning from the moment you enter your, your building. Say the morning to the security guard. Take the time to know, their name, to know their name. Make yourself known as being a genuine, kind person. You never know what it will open, what doors it will open for you. And be kind because you are a kind person. And making somebody, making somebody feel seen and feel good is your utmost priority. Number five, always ask for help when needed. There is no shame on asking for help. You are maybe doing your probation period. There are so many things you don't know. Work can be done in a hundred different time, different ways. And it's up to you to learn and it's up to you to ask for help. And that will help you thrive in the future and get promotions and, um, and sign bigger deals. Number six, which is a very important subject as well, it's always give credit to those who helped you, always. First of all, it would make you look honest. Next, it makes the other person feel appreciated and valued for the time they, they spent helping you. And number three, it will likely make them want to help you more for the next time. So it's a win-win situation. Be open to feedback. Always be open to feedback. Encourage people to give you feedback. Ask them, how did my presentation go? How did the meeting go? Do you think my voice was great? Do you think the numbers I have, I have spoke about was accurate? Ask for feedback. This is, this is one of the safest way to grow and learn to take the best from the feedback. Do not, take, do not take a feedback of another person personally. They are, look at it that as they are here helping you grow, they are here pushing you to reach your goal. So be open to feedback. Keep your commitment. Always try to keep your commitment. And if you can't, 
avoid looking for excuses. Just be open about it. Say it. I'm sorry, I was supposed to do it and I didn't have time. I promise I'm going to put my head into it by tomorrow. But be honest because people, they would remember that you are an honest person, that you don't look for shortcuts. And always, always give and be your best. Give your best at anything you do in life, anything. You are start, if you are starting as a receptionist, make sure that you are the best receptionist in your company. If you are, if you are starting as a personal assistant, make sure that you are the best personal assistant that the other executive are dreaming to have somebody like you because you do give your best at everything. You don't give 100%, you give 110 because this because it reflects your honesty, your integrity, and your work ethic. And by the way, this is how help you get noticed and promoted later on. So again, know your company key player, do arrive on time, remember your needs, observe and learn, be kind, ask for help if needed, be open to feedback and always give credit to those who help you, always. Now, how do you feel? Much better, right? Now, after your probation period, your work is not yet done. So you still have to do a lot to get this promotion that you're having in your mind. So I would say the first thing is take responsibility for your action. Make accountability a habit and do not blame others for small or big actions. Always be accountable. Sorry, everybody. Just going to move this one away, which I don't know how. Number two, do not complain, aka vent in the workplace. Always own your mistake and remember that you are still learning and you have a long process to go. Number two, avoid white lies at all costs. Avoid white lies in general in your life because it will always come back. Stick to your boundaries, Ar um, avoid uh, an example for that. Sorry, I lost my word. Is um, if you are late to your meeting, even 10 minutes, be honest. Listen, you know what? I came late because I overslept. Do not invent a traffic jam. Just avoid lies in general, always. Do not use company clients or technology to send personal emails, um, text, or open website. I don't. I think we all know the gravity of uh, of this statement, so we're not going too deep about it. Adhere to personal ethics standard based on respect, consideration, and honesty. So remember that your personal image. Remember that it is your personal image that people are perceiving and perception is very important. It might not be true most of the time, but yet it is important. So however, gift, however, gift yourself the opportunity to be known and remember for the ethical standard, it will pay off later in life, always. Lead by example. We all lead willingly or unwillingly. People do listen to what you are saying, yet they pay more attention to what you are doing. So be a great leader. Praise them, praise everybody for minor improvement. Be genuine, be genuinely interested in other people and make them feel important. Communicate positively and carefully. This is quite an important subject as well. So practice active listening. Focus on a nonverbal communication. 
manage your emotion. Knows that know that your emotions are not real, so manage them. And ask for feedback. Always ask, ask for feedback. So we'll go back again. Keep your commitment. Take responsibility for your actions. Avoid white lies. I repeat it. Avoid white lies. It will always come back. Always. Do not use company clients technology and adhere to personal ethical standard, which is based on consideration, respect, and honesty. Lead by example and communicate positively and carefully. <clears throat> and with that, you will be sure that you are going to be future leaders, you, are our, you will be our future CEOs, our future managers, and you will be great leader. Because at the end of the day, you and your generation are the leader of the future. So we're all looking up to you, we're all waiting for you to change the world. Now we will cover how to successfully maneuver the business meal and office parties. So we all have to understand that business meals are about relationship buildings. They're not about the, the, about the meal you are eating. So what we will be covering is invitation and reservation, seating protocol, what to order and when to order and when to start eating basically. BMW rules and napkins, the do's and don'ts and the bill. So pay attention. All right, so let's start by the invitation and reservation. So if you are being invited to a business dinner or a business meal in general, or even your colleague asks you, hey, let's go, for the, let's go for lunch and discuss a particular matter, this is a business meal. So first of all, respond promptly. So respond within one or two days. And if you cannot make it, let them know. Try to let them know on the spot right at that time. And by the way, do not do a no-show unless it is a question of death. Other than that, make it to your business dinner or make it to your lunch because it's very, very important because it will again reflect uh, an image of you, a professional image of you. Number two, arrive on time. Give yourself the time to arrive, relax, take a breath. If you're stuck in traffic, again, let your host know and apologize. Prepare your key conversation. As we said, every business meal is about building a relationship, is about business. So prepare your key conversation, they're very important. So for example, focus on small talks as well, because in the beginning you will, ha you will have to have small talks. So try to know your host, what they like, what they dislike, their favorite food, their drinks. And in the business, Try to know their last venture, their big career success, their big career move, et cetera. So you can have a conversation to speak about and you can show them how you admire them. And number three, I mean, and the last one is do not jump into the business subject until the moment you sit and until the moment your host start talking about it. Now seating protocol. The place of owner at the table is to the right side of the host because most people are right-handed. The second most important seat on the, left, uh, on the left of the guest. On a formal seating, you would find a place card on the table. Now what order? Great question, right? So when you are the host, anything you wish, minding your guest allergies, culture, and religion. Always mind the other person. When you're the guest, follow your host. The timing to order, so when to order. When you're the guest, when, sorry, when you're the host, when all your guests arrive, wait at least 
15 to 20 minutes for late arrival. When you're the guest, wait for the host to order first, always. Now the BMW rule and the napkin, I'm telling you, I'm not talking about the car. It is simply <clears throat> to know where is your bread, your meal and your water. It's quite simple, but it's, uh, it's relevant for your business meals, for your dinners. So this is the B for BMW and it is your bread. So your bread should always be on the right side to the plate. And then you do have your water. Your water should always be on the right side of the plate and the meal in the middle. Now for the napkin, the napkins should always, the moment you sit on the table, do take the napkin and place it on your lap. When you do leave the table and, or after the meal, put it on the left side of the, of, the, of the plate so the waiters know that you're finished. There's another way to know where is your meal, where is your, uh, sorry, where is your drinks and bread is to do this. Like, so this is the B for bread and that's the D for drink. So you have an idea where is, where is your belongings. And the last is the bill. So who pays, basically? Shall you go Dutch? I will give you a very simple answer. The host should always pay, regardless of gender, regardless of race, uh, sorry, rank. So it doesn't mean that if you are a junior and you invite your, uh, your supervisor, you still have to pay because you are the one who invited. And if you are a lady and you invite a group of gentlemen for a business meal, you still have to pay. So what do we need to remember to have a successful business dinner and an office party? So we'll go through a couple of do's, a couple of do's and don't to help you maneuver the situation. But the first thing is, please do dress appropriately, always. Uh, so if you are invited, for example, during the weekend to, uh, to anything, you know, to, to a football game, or in, always try to dress as smart casual. So always show your best image, always. Arrive on time, as we spoke earlier, or try to arrive always 10 minutes before. Silence your phone. This is a rule that I like very much. Salt and pepper and the pepper are always together. So always think about them as a marriage, you know, as a married couple. And when you have to invite one, you invite the other one. So if you do have to pass the salt and paper, pass them always together and place them on the table. Never give them like in the other person's hand because they're a couple, they must be together. They have to be delicate. Leave your plate in place, always. Do not touch your plate. There's there are other people who are actually paid for that. And it is, and it doesn't look very professional as well when you do it in front of your colleagues or in front of your manager. Treat the service staff kindly. The way we treat the service staff says a lot about us. And it says how, it, it talks about our upbringing, about how we see the world and about how we see ourselves. So always be kind to the service staff, always, regardless if you are in a business meal, in, uh, with friends, alone, always be kind. Thank your host twice. So do thank them the moment, like when you leave the restaurant and, do, and send them an email to thank them again. Usually a, a, hand, a handwritten note is preferably, but in this modern world, an email will do just fine. And as we said in the beginning, business meals are for networking. So what should you avoid at all costs? Now take a note, <laughs> do not overeat or stay at the bar area. Even if it's a business dinner, even if it's an office party, it is still for networking. It is still for you showing your best. Do not ask for a to-go bag. Even if you were in a 
two star Michelin restaurant. Do not do those things. It doesn't, it doesn't look good on you. And this is a golden rule as well. Do not have more than one drink. Never. Uh, make it a rule because you need and you must be always focused on the conversation, on your personal image. And a few other things is try to speak to everyone. Remember, as it is a net, remember, at, at, remember um, it is a networking event. So speak to everyone else, not only your colleagues or the people in your department. As we said, stay away from the bar. And stay away from judging other people, uh, other colleagues' outfit, and their plus ones. Parties are supposed to be, are supposed to bring us together, not separate us. In other words, don't gossip. It doesn't look nice at all. Now I wanted to double. Uh, I wanted to speak about social media quickly because you are moving from uh, from colleges and from universities and going to the workplace which is a completely different atmosphere it is the adult world it is the real world so social media is very important and i'm not sure if other hosts are talking about it so i just wanted to bring it always think before posting always is it relevant will it make me will it is it enhancing my personal image if it's not do not post it. Speak to your entire audience. What, what do I mean by that? Is make sure when you post something, do make sure that it, it, everybody in your friend list, everybody is comfortable with the post you have shared. Don't share overly personal information because it will come back. It will come back. So what you posted like five years ago, it can come back. Avoid negative posts. Avoid religious, political posts, because you never know what the future is bringing you. You never know where you are going to be working. And guess what? You never know how your mindset will be different. So what you think today is right might not be after 10 years. So always be open and always avoid negative posts. And do not social not work. So when you are in your office, Make sure that you are working and not on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, TikTok. You will have time for that. And always ask yourself before posting online, always. Does your online presence matches your personal brand? That's a question you should ask yourself actually right now. Does it match it? And I would love to have your answers. And would you feel comfortable if someone from your work saw your Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, would you feel comfortable about that? If yes, then great, because your online presence is matching your personal brand. And that's it from my side. So thank you very much. And if you do have any question, please ask me. And I hope it was relevant and I hope you liked it. And if you do have any inquiries, feel free to contact me at any time. Thank you. Thank you. That was an incredible, an incredible talk. Samira, I know we have a few questions coming through here in the if you could uh, maybe stop sharing your screen and then the guests can see you. Um, there we go. A couple of oh, questions that, that came through here um, from our end, and please do everyone keep them coming. First of all, a big thank you. We had some amazing feedback from our from our audience saying it's very informative. Majid Mohammed Alawadi was saying that. We had Roland saying it was very, very useful. Uh, Mrs. Atassi giving you big thank yous. Alex Cooper saying that it's very informative. So Ben Adair saying he has some questions about how do you handle pay disputes in the workplace with etiquette? So say, for example, you're not happy with your salary and you're wanting an increase. How does an individual do that with the most respectful approach to their line manager, but also in ensuring that they do get to uh, vocalize how they're feeling about salary? 
That's a very good question. Thank you. I, I do not remember the name of the person who asked it, but um, be, being paid for what you are offering to the company is very important. But at the same time, we will uh, not forget that we are going, we just speaking about now, we are going through an, uh, an era of pandemic. So uh, think before asking about your, your raise. Is it the right time for you and for your company? and for your colleagues, because you don't know. What is it? Maybe a lot of people, they get redundant. We know now that they are given 50% of salaries in most companies. So the way for you to manage it, you can have an upfront conversation with your manager. And you tell him, listen, you know what? I have been working here for maybe six months or a year, and I'm really and I'm really appreciative about, uh, about the offer. And But I think that I would it would be better for me if I can have uh, like a raise of salary and you can state like notes why do you think you can have a raise of salary state um, like prepare your notes and prepare your arguments in a way that this is what you are offering and this is what you are asking for obviously do not ask for a double but ask maybe for an increase of 25 percent or 30 percent or even 15 percent like make it make it um, in a way that what you are asking is not too much comparing to the to the work you are offering. And then when they give you that, you can tell them, hey, and by the way, maybe we can discuss it after six months again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Samir. And that's a really important one. I'm, I'm happy you mentioned about uh, the pandemic right now. I think it's really important. There's a lot of fear in the environment. There's a lot of fear with you know, if I ask for what I feel I deserve, will they let me go because of the pandemic? And although we have seen in the workplace that there are some organizations taking advantage of this situation, but all in all, I think overall, most people do want to be retaining good talent, would you say? And Samira, in thinking about talent and thinking about how do employers decide who's going to stay and who's not going to stay? Would you say, do you see from your experience with clients that those who do come across with proper etiquette, very professional, are the ones that tend to stand out in an employer's uh, vision when they're thinking about retaining talent? Yes, yes, yes. I would 100% yes. Uh, because when you look at it from, uh, from an outside point of view, um, People working in that department, they all have the same degrees, more or less, different universities, but maybe different GBD, but it's still the same, the same degrees. So what would make somebody else stand out is their soft skills, is their etiquette and their manners and the way they are making other people feel comfortable. And when I say other people feel comfortable, it's not only the managers, but the colleagues, the janitor, everybody, people want to work with kind people. It makes you feel good to have a nice colleague. It makes you happy. It makes you want to jump off your bed and go to work. Incredible. Thank you so much, uh, Samira. Another question that comes to my mind, you mentioned, you know, try to remember names. And I know that that's a big issue for many, many people when they're working in larger enterprises, larger organizations. Do you have any tricks that you could provide us to learn how to retain those names. So I know teachers watching this right now, especially in the secondary education when they're teaching large numbers of students, it's one of our biggest challenges. How do we retain those names? What would you say is a good trick to remember? So the first thing is uh, when you are first, like when you first meet that person and when you're being introduced to a new person, when they, when they say their name, say it again. So for example, oh, very nice, you Maria what do you think Maria about that so try to say the name two to three times and then if the name is complicated because thank god we live in the UAE you know we live with so many different cu cultures and so many different names so sometimes names are complicated try to break it you know into two and, and try to maybe visualize like remember the face of that person so for example ok Maria is bright so I'm like okay like Ave Maria you know if that makes sense to you, and then it will, it. you will always remember it. Definitely, that's a great trick. Such a great trick. Just looking here at the um, Yasmin is saying, she wish she could have more access to online sessions like this. Where can we find you, Samira? Do you do 
uh, uh, online uh, sessions like this where you do talk about relationship building with coworkers from personal to professional context. Yes, 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 yes. Everything is uh, setting on our website. Just drop us an email. It is www.themodernetiquetteacademy.com. We are uh, in this, all the social medias like Facebook, Instagram. Uh, that's it, actually. We're not in TikTok. We're not in other things. So just do. Sorry. <laughs> Misinformation. <Incredible. laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> definitely. I definitely uh, recommend anyone to, to do that. Like I said, Dubai English Speaking College did have Samira Hamadi do a proper sit down with our students. We had a, was it a three course or four course meal? And we were, I, we were learning in action. Incredible. It was beautiful, it was beautiful. And I remember that uh, the students as well were asking personal questions. So I just would like to say that if you do have a personal question, just send me an email and I would be more than happy to answer it. And you can ask me about anything. I'm very open. So. I will always be happy to add to answer it like re regarding to etiquette from a certain point of view. And it's so important. It's not something we learn in the classroom, but it's something that they're expected to have either in an academic interview, in a job interview, or like you said, just at a, a social gathering. Miss Roslyn is out there giving a big shout out to Dubai English Speaking College Year 13 BTEC media students. Samira, these students are preparing for their media futures. You talked about social media presence. Any tips for them to really, really consider? I know you said, be careful what you're posting. If it's not aligned with your brand, really think carefully, it will come back. And I think a lot of young people forget that, you know, we're living in a time where whatever we put is, is on the digital, it's, it's out there and it definitely can come back. Any tips that we definitely need to be thinking about if we are a media student looking at a career in that industry? Um, I would like to say something. Uh, it will always come back. Uh, social bullying is real. What you thought was fun maybe five years ago, you know, is completely different. And it might be, it will come back to you maybe after 10 years, 20 years. So always remember that. Now for your uh, social media, for, uh, for, for the um, social media presence is that try to find an angle, an angle where you would stand out in your, in your media presence and be there, be that advocate of, uh, of this noble cause or of this beautiful cause, you know, maybe littering, be an eco warrior. I'm just like thinking out of my mind, like do something that would make you stand out and be innovative. Like do something that other people did not do. Try to think Thank out of the box. Thank you so much, Samira. That brings us to the end of an incredible conversation with you, Samira. We talked about all things etiquette in the workplace, in our, in our own social lives. Think about your presence. It's that nonverbal communication, something that really is going to make you stand out. Young people listening to this, if you are preparing yourself for an interview for your next academic pathway, what you wanna remember is before you even speak, your presence has already passed on a message. If you wanna be standing out in that interview or in a job interview, in an academic interview, even in a classroom, remember some of the tips that Samira brought to you. And that is an amazing end to my first speaker of room three,